In this video, we're gonna look at status bars for tkinter. Hey guys, John Alder here from tkinter.com and it's pretty common for an app to have a little status bar at the bottom to show statuses, things that are updating in the app as they're updating. Unfortunately, tkinter does not have a status bar widget, which is kind of a hassle, but we can hack one together fairly easily and that's what we're gonna do in this video. But before we get started, be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book in your email address and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com and get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. So let's build a status bar. Let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this intro to tkinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got a file I'm calling it status.py. It's our basic kinter starter code that we always have. And the first thing we want to do is just create a little button. We need something to click in order to change the status of our app. So we'll just use a button for that. So let's go my underscore button. And that's going to be a button. We want to put it in a root. We want the text to say, I don't know, next, maybe a couple arrows. And let's give this a font of, uh, let's say Helvetica and like a size of 18, make it nice and big. We also want to give this a command of next. So it does something when we click it. So let's go my underscore button dot pack and let's give this a pad Y of like a hundred, really push it down the screen. So here, let's create our next function real quick and we'll just pass for now. Now let's create a status bar. And like I said, tkinter does not have a status bar widget, which is kind of a pain, but it's actually not that bad because we can create one using a label very simply and we can customize it to make it really look like a status bar in any way that we want. So I'm going to call this my underscore status, and this is going to be a label, and this is going to be a label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say, uh, for now, let's say zero of 100. I don't know, and that should be fine. Now let's my underscore status dot pack this guy, and let's just put this on the screen and see what we have. So if we go ahead and save this, actually, let's knock out our next function real quick. I'm going to create a quick variable that's global. I'm going to call it count. I'm going to set count equal to one. And inside of here, we'll also do a global count. So this can pass back and forth. I know a lot of you guys don't like to use globals, but for this example, it's going to be fine. And let's say uh, my underscore status dot config. And we want the text to equal. And let's create an F string here. And inside of here, let's say count of 100. Right now, let's count plus equals one. So we'll increment the counter. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it, see what we have. Head over to our terminal, I'm in my c slash tkinter.com directory, and let's run python status.py. When we do, we get this button, we've got this text. It's not anywhere near where we want it to be, but if we click this, you can see it updates. All right, at least that works. So now we need to get this thing down to the bottom and over into this corner. How do we do that? Well. Super simple, we just configure this thing in the pack however we want it. So first off, we can pick a side and let's pick bottom, right? And you could do it like this. You could also do it like this, right? Both of these are valid. It just depends, I think on your operating system, maybe in Mac or Linux, you have to do it like this or vice versa, I don't know. I always just use quotes, go bottom. So let's save this and run it, see what this looks like. And boom, now it's down at the bottom. Very cool. Uh, what else? We need to now put it in the corner. How do we do that? Well, up here where we define it, we can pick an anchor. We could pick east, west, north, or south, right? Or if you want to do it like this, you can do it like that. I'm going to pick east. And this is the directional system in tkinter. North is up, south is down, east is right, west is left. Yeah. So if we save this and run it, we see it's still in the center because this label is only this big. It's only as big as the text. So it's on the right side of its little container. We need to stretch that container to the entire length of this app. And we can do that using fill. So let's head back over here. And down here, we can pick a fill of X. And same deal here, you could go capital X, but I always just like to do it like that. Okay, so now if we save this, head back over here, boom, it's over here on the side. Now, again, this doesn't look like a status bar. We need some way to differentiate this 
from everything else. And we could do this a couple of different ways. One, you could change the background color of this. So let's do that one first. So up here, we can set the BG to any color we want. I'm just gonna pick silver. It's kind of like the color it already is, but just a little darker. And when we do, now it's starting to look like a status bar. Now you can use your hex color codes to make this any color you want. So I probably wouldn't use silver. I'd use a hex color code that was slightly darker than this app color. You know, you can play around with Photoshop to get that if you want, but whatever, that's one nice way to do it. You can also give your text widget a relief. So let me get rid of that and let's give this a relief and we can set this equal to anything we want. Let's go sunken. And when you use a relief, you also need a border. So BD equals one. So if we save this and run it, we see now we have this nice sort of box around here and we're starting to look more like a status bar. So all of the widgets can use reliefs. Most of the widgets can use reliefs and they are sunken. Well, let me start out. Flat is just sort of the default, nothing. So we're not even gonna look at that one. We also have raised. We also have groove and ridge. So let's just look at these real quick. Sunken, we've done. Let's do raised. There we go. If we save this and run it, slightly different. It's kind of a very light border. Right. So that's kind of cool. You might like that. Uh, we could also do groove. There we go. And sometimes if you change the border from one to two, you can really see the difference between these. Like you can't really tell this and sunken. They kind of look the same, uh, but whatever, play around with them. And then finally we could do ridge. We save this one and run it. This is another lighter one. I kind of like that and very cool. Now you'll notice this is all crammed together. So let's give this an iPad of one or two to give it some space above and below. Uh, iPad is very much like pad. So here we did pad Y that's external padding up and down. We can do internal padding up and down as well by calling iPad Y. And like I said, let's give this two and let me change this back to like sunken. I don't know. I kind of like that. Uh, run this guy again. And you see now there's a little bit of space. You maybe can't tell, but above and below, that looks good. Now it's also right up against the edge. I don't really love that. You would think you could give it an iPad X to have internal padding, but you can't because we've changed this fill and this uh, anchor, uh, where do we do it? Right there. So you're kind of stuck with iPad X. You can't really use that. So what we can do is just put a couple of spaces in our actual label, same thing for this. So there we go. If we just change that, let me clear the screen and let's run this. And ah, we're starting to look good. We got some padding on this side. We got a little bit of padding above and below. If we click this, it does its thing. Three or four or five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now this is a very stupid status, right? Who cares how many times we click this, but I hope you understand you can have any status you want. You might have a percentage if something is completing. 25% complete, 30% complete, 50% complete, whatever. You might put that there. You might have some other progress of some sort you want to output. You can put that there. Whatever you want to put, you would just do it, you know, in this function and then call this function whenever you wanted your status to update or whatever. So uh, pretty simple and uh, not that difficult. So that's status bars. Like I said, it would be nice if there was a widget for status bars, but there isn't. But Hey, this is pretty simple and you have a lot of different ways to customize this, right? You could use your reliefs, you can use your background colors, you can use your borders. And if, if you wanted to change this from, you know, the right side to the west, to the left side, you could just change this to a W. If we come back over here and run this guy, you see now it's over here, right? I think they should be over here. All status things are usually over there. It's kind of the way it is. You notice right down here, we have sort of a status thing. Well, you can't really see like right here. These are sort of statusy things in the sublime text editor, whatever, play around with this, have some fun, change this back to E and we're good to go. So those are status bars in the next video, which should pop up over here. We're going to look at pop-up menus. So my name is John Elder from tkinter.com and I'll see you in the next video.